In this video, I'll show you how to use transform nodes such as Warp, Splatter, and Tyler, um, what buffer nodes are and when it might be good to use them. And then we'll finish up with creating this stylized grass material. We'll be using Material Maker 0 0.94. If you're new to Material Maker, you should watch my introduction to Material Maker video before watching this one. Let's start out with having a look at the different transform nodes available in Material Maker and also a quick look at buffer nodes. So first up we have the transform node, which you can do all the, the basic transform operations with like translation, rotation and scaling. And you can use the gizmo in the preview or you can drive the values directly here. Um, but the real power from the transform node uh, sort of comes into play with these inputs where you can drive the values directly. Um, so one example where you would use this is uh, here where we have a a pattern of some planks and a pattern of some wood and when we blend them together it doesn't look so great because the pattern just continues across um, but then you could use a transform node and uh, have the translation be driven by the random color values and then you can see we can uh, offset them so we no longer have this issue and then when we combine them we no longer have the pattern of the wood running across the planks Next up we have the warp node, which is great if you want to add small variants to your input. Um, so in this case we have a checker pattern uh, and we have some noise uh, to drive the warp and if we uh, improve, increase the strength a bit, you can see it gets uh, moved in different directions. And it's based on the slope, um, so a way to illustrate that is if we, we use a radial gradient here, you can see it's uh, almost like this uh, uh, fisheye distortion. Next up we have the Tyler node, which takes an input and uh, tiles it in a grid-like fashion. Um, you can also um, add randomization uh, for some really interesting effects. Um, and um, it mixes each instance together uh, with the Leiden function, so uh, it very elegantly mixes together uh, height data. You also have the option of uh, passing in multiple inputs in one go. To do this, you'll need to use a Tile 2x2 node um, which has four different inputs and that'll create this little grid and then if we pass that in um, and then set the inputs to four then it'll pick between the four different shapes. The Tyler node also has a mask input um, which decides the value of each instance so uh, I've set up uh, this mask with some noise and if we run that into the Tyler you can see we get uh, dark areas uh, here this allows for some really interesting effects. You can even stack multiple uh, tilers on top of each other to sort of fill in the blank spaces with different or smaller shapes. The tiler node also comes with a secondary output, um, the instance map, which is a random color assigned to each instance. So you can use this uh, data to uh, randomize the output in interesting ways afterwards. Next up we have the splatter node, which is very similar to the Tyler node. It has the same inputs and outputs. Um, the only big difference is that it uh, outputs instances randomly rather than on a grid from the beginning. It is, however, much slower than the Tyler node, so uh, you shouldn't use this uh, for anything with a very high number of instances. Next up we have the circle splatter node, which again is very similar to the Tyler and the splatter node, but instead of placing uh, instances randomly, it, uh, it places them in uh, circles and you have uh, special controls for adjusting that. And then uh, there's also a colored version of each of these nodes, uh, which instead takes a colored input and um, of course outputs a colored input as well. And instead of mixing based on the um, Lighten function, it mixes based on the alpha in the input. So finally, I'll just touch on buffer nodes, which are very practical when using splatter and tiler nodes. So a buffer node basically just takes its input and creates an image of it. So when you then pass it on to another node, instead of it having to traverse the whole path and calculate every time it needs the data, it just can look it up in the image texture. So um, these become very necessary when you get really complicated nodes sometimes. But you also have to keep in mind that uh, you are converting um, the data into a texture instead so you can lose quality. So now that we know about some different transform nodes, let's try and use some of them to make a cartoony grass texture. Uh, we'll start out by making a single straw. Um, there's many ways we could approach this, but I'll uh, create it out of a circle shape. So we'll start out by creating a circle shape. 
and we'll uh, set its hardness uh, to zero and then we'll use a transform node to move it a bit to the side and move it up a bit and we'll use another transform node um, this one I haven't covered it's called mirror but you can probably guess what, what it does and then if we move about a bit further we can scale like this and we have a pretty good uh, base for our straw now if we uh, blend the straw together with a gradient and we'll just have to rotate this a little bit and then we can have a look at this we'll set it to multiply and to 100 and then we can uh, adjust the values until we cut off the bottom of the straw and we get a nice little gradient like that now for a bit more definition we'll uh, blend it together um, with one more gradient um, and this one we'll also multiply with and we will do something like this and then we can just set it to something small we need to swap around the input now we can sort of give it a little bit of an edge in the middle here just to give it a little bit of that indication that it's a blade of grass this can probably be very low and still give a bit of definition now that we have our one straw of grass uh, let's use a circle splatter node to make a bunch of grass so we'll say 10 and we'll say one ring and we'll say really small radius and we won't use the increase rotate we'll just use the random rotate and a bit of random scale and maybe a bit of random value as well and then we can just uh, move it around until we get a nice little uh, bunch of grass we like and then we can uh, lock the randomization so it doesn't change again by pressing the little die then uh, I'll just use a transform node um, to move the instance a bit into the middle and scale it up a bit oh, and I guess it extends a little bit so we just have to set it to extend for it to that looks strange there okay so now that I'm happy with my one bunch of grass I want to run that into a tile and make lots of bunches of grass but I'll just uh, run it through a buffer first so the tiler node doesn't have to work so hard Let's put it into a tiler let's say something like 16 by 16 and dot 15 by 15 let's see what that looks like that looks pretty good and we'll give it full random rotation and random offset and uh, give it a bit of random scale and a bit of random value so now if we wanted to add a bit more variation to this we could have uh, four different versions um, of our uh, bunch of grass uh, to pass in um, so we could use four different circle splatters to do that but uh, let's uh, instead uh, cheat a bit and uh, and just um, create four variations uh, by using a warp node so we'll pass the same input into the tile by tile uh, two four times then we'll pass that into a warp node and we'll use some uh, some noise in here and then suddenly we uh, we have a bit of variation here and if we then instead pass those into the buffer and then we just need to say that we're using four inputs instead then we have slightly varying little bunches of grass so now we basically have a really nice output that we can just use to drive all our values and um, let's just start out by uh, setting our metallic value to zero on our material because we're not making a metallic material and um, then we'll take the output here and we'll uh, run it through a colorize node and we'll just uh, choose like a, a dark green for the bottom of the grass and uh, maybe a slightly yellowish uh, 
for the tips and that looks pretty good so let's just run that into the albedo channel and uh, next up for the roughness we'll just uh, basically do the same we'll make a colorize node and we'll say uh, far down on the grass it's a bit rough and uh, further up it's uh, it's a little bit smoother and we'll run that into the roughness now for the normal map we could just uh, run the output uh, straight through uh, a normal map node here um, but that'll be a bit of an intense look so uh, let's try and uh, and run it through a blur node first just to soften it up a little bit set it to something uh, pretty low e5 run that into our normal map node instead and just set it a bit lower as well, just to give it a little bit of definition. And now for the ambient occlusion, that's very easy. We'll just run it into an occlusion node and set it to a higher resolution. And there we have some shadows and boom, in with those. So this is all looking pretty good, but uh, let's try and add a bit more variation in by using the instance map. So um, if we run that to a decompose node, then we can use each of the separate colors as separate outputs. So uh, if we use another blend node and blend that together with the colorize, set it to multiply, then we suddenly have the option to slightly darken randomly the different bunches of grass. So that looks good. We'll put that into the albedo. And we'll just uh, do the same thing for the, uh, the roughness. Just uh, take another one of the channels here and just do another blend mode blend node, set it to multiply, and then here, set it to something like this, then we just get a bit of variance in the roughness as well. And there we have it, our uh, little material is uh, done, and uh, you should just uh, be able to export that straight into any game engine you want. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this tutorial and would like to support me in making more tutorials and open source projects like my Godot add-ons, consider supporting me on Patreon. Thanks to my patrons, Little Mouse Games, Winston, Johannes Wunsch, Space J Zero, Dimitri Keen and Marcus Richter.